so you sober. Your dopamine is very low. You feel horrible. You are in the facility. We're holding you. You don't use drugs. Craving comes and go. Eventually it goes away. Now what happened? Your dopamine is too low. You are in a negative emotional state. This is the biggest problem we have. The only way that I can increase that negative emotional state is giving you dopamine. These things don't work. Psychiatric medications. Of course, you get a stimulant, you're going to love it, you're going to feel great, and you're going to basically relapse and get in trouble. During the negative emotional state, you have an opportunity that you're no longer in an acute withdrawal state, and your brain quiet down to put your life together, to work from within, to enjoy things that are within yourself, not out of yourself, to do the things you're supposed to do, so that dopamine can go back to normal. 90 days after you are clean, if you work hard, your dopamine will go to normal, 100. Will you feel as good as I feel? No. You will still feel miserable because my thermostat is 100. I don't use drugs, but yours is 300. I don't know what to tell you to do at this point, but I will tell you, go bungee jumping, play a lot of games, go water rafting, do things for fun that you enjoy, get four or five hobbies, volunteer, go to church if you like it. You got to get busy. Otherwise, this negative emotional state, which is always be behind you, will prevent you from function again. So the problem seems to be that I don't have a solution to the negative emotion. I cannot bring your dopamine thermostat back to 100. So you can enjoy simple things in life. And this is what will stay with you forever. So whenever you said, I'm bored, you're not doing enough. Whenever you said, I feel like moving out of here, this is not the right place for me to be. I'll have to tell you this. Wherever you go, that feeling is going to go with you. You have to work it out yourself. So sadly, addiction seems not to be the way we thought. And if I get addiction with all my knowledge, I'm going to behave exactly the same way addicts behave. That will not empower me to behave differently because something within me, more powerful than me, is taking over. It's like a seizure disorder, epilepsy. I can do whatever I want to do, but if I'm going to have a seizure, I'm going to have a seizure. This is an emotional seizure caused by all these changes in the brain. And this is something that sadly is more powerful than your eye capacity to contain, but you see it coming. And that's when I want you to do one only thing for the prevention of relapse. It's difficult. You just have to pay attention. <coughs> you will see it coming. Sadly, too close to it happening, relapse. But you see it coming. You feel initially happy. You want to visit some friends and you feel thrilled to go. You're going to go around and you're going to see a place and you're going to say, my God, let's go to that place. Look, it's so nice. Stop. Think. Turn around. Change direction. All I want you is to change direction when you see yourself to a relapse or a wall. But to turn in a different direction, you have to be paying attention. You'll be the last one to find out when you hit the wall. Or like a guy told me, I don't know what happened. I, w I went to say hello to a friend of mine in a bar, and next thing I'm in the jail, handcuffed, and sick as hell. He says, that's the way it is. You went to a place where there were cues and drugs were there. <coughs> and now you are in deep, deep trouble. 
So we need 90 days, insurance only pay for 30. We don't have a perfect drug to deal with this and will never be. You cannot touch that thing. There was a medication, ibogaine, like a miracle. You give it to patients, no withdrawal. It calmed down the whole primitive brain. Three months later, you could relapse. We give it to you again, like a miracle. No cravings, no withdrawal, no nothing. But three, four, five, more, more latest, maybe longer, you relapse. We give it to you again, and then we found you sitting in a chair in your apartment, and you don't do nothing. Radio imaging were done. Something was missing in the brain. We destroyed the nucleus accumbens. The essence to be human. The reason we're motivated to do certain <coughs> things and not others. Without the reward system, and the motivation is useless. The emotional system is disappearing. This is no longer going to be a human being. So when we put it all together, we see that the disease is complex, it's neurological, it's acquired. Nobody can be an addict without using drugs. Logical. Nobody has an addictive personality. Because what you messed up in your brain is present in every single human being's brain, which is the nucleus accumbens and the motivational system. So we forgot that you have a motivational system, a reward system, and together they create a disease of addiction. We're struggling, we're trying to find better treatment, better options, but it looks like it's not going to be a magic pill, and detox is just the initial stage. And the easiest one to accomplish. You sit down, open your mouth, get a pill, okay, blood pressure's better, fine. The most difficult stage is the negative emotional state that follow the 30 days after rehab, which is why we struggle to send you to an IOP, to a rehab facility, to a, in, a outpatient therapy, follow up with doctors, see this, do this, do that, and sadly, you now get it, we have a big obstacle. You know how many people I fix I think I fix. And they end up seeing a doctor who put in one of these things, and next they relapse and back to square zero. So we have a unique approach here, by the way. We minimize the use of psychiatric medications. We try to use as many strategies as possible, from medical, holistic, to pain management, and natural, we use a lot of natural products. And we have seen a dramatic improvement in help in those. And we know they basically will not impact the way the psychotropics do. Some patients will need psychotropics. In my personal experience, maybe 2%. I've been able to take off patients chronically on antidepressants, antipsychotics, and all these meds. And probably 98% even realize how better they felt after they stopped doing it.